Um, I was also very pleased to hear the President in his State of the Union um, and to see that in action as well, the commitment to energy efficiency, which is something that I believe is very important. Senator Portman and I have a, a Bill S-1000 that addresses energy efficiency um, in uh, the industrial sector and government and in buildings. But one of the best ways to um, encourage energy efficiency is by supporting the expansion of cogeneration or combined heat and power. Um, these are the technologies used are generally off the shelf. They exist right here in the United States. The jobs that are created um, are here in the U.S. So can you talk to what the position of the department is on combined heat and power and how you address that in this upcoming budget? Uh, we are very bullish on combined heat and power. Um, you know, in today's modern, let's say, gas turbine generation, you can get 55, 60 percent uh, efficiency in converting uh, that energy into electricity, but it's at best 60 percent. You know, I guess some companies claim 61 or two, but I'm not going to quibble. And um, in combined heat and power, you go up to 80 uh, percent. It it can be now. Where we think that, and if there's any way to encourage people to do that, that would be great. There's also uh, new ideas and new innovations being deployed now that seem to work. Some, because here's the issue: sometimes you want the electricity, you don't want the process heat, or maybe you want the heat, you don't want the electricity. Uh, I was visiting a project we supported in Recovery Act funds in uh, Houston, Texas. It powers uh, this collection of medical centers that have. As, as about the 12th largest city in the United States, just the medical centers. And um, everything's big in Texas. And anyway, um, the, what they had is they had a, uh, a very efficient gas generator, but single cycle. They had high temperature process heat that could be used for heating or air conditioning. Now, the beauty of what they did is they took that process heat and they used it. You can actually use heat to cool. And so they used it to chill water. Uh, and they would store this cold water in this big tank right there. And uh, they found that it took about less than 10 percent of the energy, even in a hot Houston summer day, to keep that tank cold. And so they would run it so that that would balance. It's like a big battery, but it's a battery of heat that they would use to air condition their complex. Okay, so, so and it was very cost effective. So they were operating this plant, 80 percent efficiency, recovering all of that, very fuel efficient, and again drives down the cost to their customers, the medical centers, the hospitals. Uh, and so that's an excellent example of how combined heat and power can be used in a way. I mean, buildings, new buildings now, many of them, especially if you, you have uh, real-time pricing of electricity, they use the electricity at night, chill some water, even make turn into ice, use the ice to cool the building during the daytime. So you're buying electricity where it's inexpensive, you you decrease your electricity bill, the assets of generation are used, you're getting better return on your uh, investment because you're using the asset in a more even way. And so the good news is combined, so this all is about energy efficiency, essentially. And so combined heat and power uh, in any, any city, any university, any hospital that has uh, an integration of steam and chilled water tunnels or a big complex could use combined heat and power. And uh, we'd love to see it uh, go in that direction because now you're going to 80 percent efficiency.